What is up everybody, Jay Costa here. Today I wanted to talk to you about listing presentations. I tend to do listing presentations a little, a little differently than a lot of other people and this is because both from my personal experience as well as learning from some other agents on YouTube and online. When I first started out and when we all first start out, we're told to print out a big pre-listing package and leave it on their door and do this big CMA analysis on the property and print it out and go through everything. In my experience, that really bores people, that really bores sellers and you you, you lose a connection with them. So I kind of wanted to go over what I do on my listing presentations. So, so let's say you make a call or you get a referral and you get an appointment set. First, you obviously have to prepare. So preparing for the listing appointment is really most of where I put my, my energy into. Once I have an appointment set, you know, let's say that day comes, depending on the time uh, of the appointment, I'm gonna focus a few hours on just looking up and learning everything I possibly can about the house, about the sellers, and about the neighborhood. So I look up the property first to see if it's ever been on the market before. Because if it's been on the market before, especially recently, expired listing or something like that, that'll give you a lot of information in regards to where the sellers are gonna be at, in regards to both their motivation as well as their, their thoughts on price. So I look up the any MLS history of the property. I look up the tax data of the property. I look up the sellers if I can. Google their name, I look them up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, try to find anything about them that I can. You know, maybe there's a connection that I could use in regards to building rapport with them and building trust with them. And then I move on to the neighborhood and comps. So I put a lot of focus on knowing exactly what the houses in that immediate area have sold for recently. That's going to help a lot when you meet with them in person because they know about that most of the time. They know that their neighbors, even if it was two or three years ago, they remember that their neighbors sold for X amount and you, you, you're gonna have to know that. And if you do know, it's gonna, it's gonna make you look very impressive. So I put a lot of time and focus on preparation. Now, in regards to what I bring to the listing presentation, I keep it very brief and very simple. Most of my preparation is up in my head. I don't print out big, huge packets, like I said. No, no big, huge CMA. All I bring, everything I bring, can fit in this folder. Very, very simple and brief, okay? I print out a few different things and put them in that folder. First, I print out, if, it, if there was a, a prior listing, if it's an expired listing, I print that out. That really helps me in regards to when I meet with them, I have it right in front of me to see what they what they listed it for, if they dropped the price at all, and you know maybe the picture sucked, and I can that would remind me to bring that up to them it, when we meet in person. I also print out the tax records. That will give me some information, a, a couple different pieces of information that's going to help me when I meet with them in person. First, I, I like to verify that the square footage of the house and the square footage of the lot are, as well as the taxes, are all correct on the tax data. Third, I like to print out a blank, completely blank listing agreement, and I don't put any uh, pressure on them to sign it at all. I just have it in there. I kind of bring it up at the end, So, but we'll get to that. And then I also print out comps. I print out a cover page for this. You know, it basically just has my name, EXP Realty, comparable properties on a cover page. First page, I like to put all of the active listings on the market right now in the town, okay? Because that'll show us our competition. If we put up the house for sale tomorrow, this is our competition. This is who we have to beat out for buyers. Second, I like to print a list, just a list of the ha the similar houses that have sold in the past six months is usually great, but if I have to go a little bit further back, it depends on the neighborhood and the area. If I have to go a little bit further back up to a year, I would. Not really anything more than a year. But that's just a list. I'm not printing out pages and pages of pictures of comps. It's just a list. The address, the price sold, you know, bedrooms, bathrooms, the type of house, colonial split level, whatever it is. And that's gonna give the sellers a range, you know, because if their house is a four bedroom colonial house, I'm only really gonna bring up four bedroom colonial houses in their town and put them on that list. And there could be a big range because it could be a 60 year old house and it could be a brand new construction house, both four bedroom colonials, 
but it, at least it'll give them a range in regards to where we're gonna be. It could be like 500 to 800 or 700 to a million or whatever it is. If there's any really good comps, like I'll try to just pick like one or maybe two, hopefully something like on the same street, across the street, you know, the block next over, something that really, really comps out very, very closely to their house. For that, I'll print out its own MLS sheet. Once again, not, not pages and pages of pictures, I usually send them the pictures through email after we meet so they, they can look on their on their uh, computer but just one page a one page MLS sheet and then lastly I just print out a little packet of all of my transactions and it'll show everything <clears throat> I have active under contract and then sold and I print that out I put a little cover page once again my name my broker that's all I put in the whole folder here in my experience when you print out big huge CMA packets and stuff and marketing strategies this thick, their, their eyes glaze over. The sellers get very bored. You're in there for over an hour. So I show up to the house uh, with that folder in hand, as well as I, I, you know, I have it in a, in a little packet like this. And I just have it simply in there and I close it. So when I get there, I take the, the folder out and I'm ready to go with a note with a legal notepad. I always get there, you know, a few minutes early, five minutes early, or, or at least right on time. Never late, obviously, and never too early. I get there, I say, hey, you know, uh, can you, 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 can I look around the house, or can you, you know, show me around the house, and walk around and try to take notes, um, even if you're forcing it. Try to take notes because if you're just looking around with nothing in your hands, it gives off the impression to the seller that you're not even really paying attention to anything that they're pointing out. It helps in regards to the seller's opinion of your professionalism. And try to ask as many questions as you can. When was the last, you know, what work did you do to the house? When, when did you redo the kitchen? When did you buy the house? How long, you, you know, how long you lived there for? You know, do your kids still live in the area? Um, all that sort of stuff. It shows that A, you're, you're, you're interested, as well as it'll also give you a lot of information in regards to their motivations. Once you go through the house completely, you sit down with them. You bring out the the pack, the, the uh, folder, and just I like to simply ask them, "What's your plan?" They they'll they'll tell you what what they want to do. You know, maybe they're selling it to downsize. Maybe they're selling it to move closer to their kids who just had a grandchild. Once they tell you their motivations and what they're trying to do, that's when I bring out the the comparable properties, the comps. This house was not renovated as much as yours. This house was just renovated, you know, a little more than yours, and you know, this is where, you know, the house should be put on the market for. Before I do that though, I like to ask them, I like to put it out there, is there a specific amount that you need to get from the property, you know, to pay off a mortgage or, I do that for really one reason, one reason alone, that's to see if they'll give you a price that, you know, some, some sellers want a price or even need a price to sell for, for them to even think about selling. And that'll put that out there that you know maybe they you know they'll they'll tell you where they're at in regards to price because if they tell you well we want 800 and you're going in thinking this house is worth 675 i'm not saying you're wasting your time with that but at least it'll give you an idea to kind of ease into a little bit because you don't want to offend them or insult them right you don't want to just put like a hard stop on it kind of want to see where they're at now sometimes sellers don't want to give you that information sometimes they want your opinion on the price first which is okay if they do that tell them the, the your thoughts on the price and tell them why and show them the comps that that starts a conversation that needs to be had if they're higher and if they're not higher you're starting off on a good foot where they're going to trust you because that means that hey you're you're both in the same ballpark in regards to pricing. Once you go through the pricing strategy, I don't like talking about myself all that much. The more I talk about them and the more I ask them questions and get them to talk, the less I talk and the more they talk, the better. Because when you're talking about yourself all the time, they, once again, their eyes glaze over and you know they don't really wanna hear about you. They wanna hear about how you can help them. The key is to get them to talk. Try to talk as little as possible, really, unless you're 
you know, your ask specific questions. I tell them, you know, listen, I don't like to, you know, when I, when I go on appointments like this, I don't like to talk and talk and talk about myself all the time because it's, you know, frankly boring. But, and then this is when I take out my, my sheet of, you know, activity with the cover page on it. I stay busy. I do a lot of business in the area. Generally that, that hits home pretty good for them because usually I already have their email address and they're set up on my website and my weekly email newsletter. Uh, you could check back to my previous videos. I'll actually put a link in the description. They already know, usually by the time I meet with, they already know what I'm doing because they're getting my emails constantly, constantly. I'm always in front of their face on, on, the, on the computer. I, I don't sell myself very much, honestly, but the key is to just build trust and rapport with them and show them that you're not just there to get them to sign a listing agreement and walk out. You're not there for your own motivations. You're there to help them. Now, I do print a completely blank listing agreement. Anytime I go in on a listing presentation, I do not expect them to sign a listing agreement at all. But I do still print it out for two different reasons. One main one. If they want to sign right then and there, you're ready to go. Even if they say, okay, we're ready to move forward with you, I, st I don't push them hard on the signing of the listing agreement because once you do that, you run the risk of them losing trust with you because you all of a sudden you go from, you know, a very calm, non-aggressive agent, you know, you're building trust and rapport with them. If you start getting, like pushing them heavy on a sales pitch to sign Sign right here on the dotted line to lose a lot of trust and if they say they want to uh, move forward with you and if you don't push them on signing the listing agreement right then and there I think it even strengthens their trust with you that that much more because it shows that you trust them once you get through the listing presentation the next day I don't contact them through phone or text but what I do is I take a little uh, envelope and a little card and I write a handwritten note in there and I say, dear sellers, thank you so much for the opportunity to meet with you at your house the other day. Your time is very valuable, so I greatly appreciate it. If you have any, if you have any questions going forward, please do not hesitate to reach out. If there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. And I just send it in the mail. I like to wait for them to get that card. Just call them up. Say, hey, how you doing? I want to thank you again for meeting with me the other day. Just wanted to make sure you know you didn't have any uh, lingering questions or you know anything I could help you with going forward. The soft sales pitch has worked better for me than the hard sales pitch. I have just put more emphasis on building trust as opposed to just getting them to sign on the dotted line. And I've had a lot of success with that. I think a lot of it is because I come off as genuine. I I don't really keep track of it. I probably should, but I figure at least at least three quarters of the at least seventy five percent of the listening presentations that I go on, um, you know, they end up going with me as the agent instead of picking someone else. That's what uh, that's what I do for my listing presentation. Like I said, very simple, very brief, quick. I don't like to bog down in a lot of small little details in regards to comparable property analysis. And you don't want to be sitting there for an hour, 15 minutes, an hour and a half in their house. They're going to be like, get this guy out of here. This is taking way too long. I like to keep it 45 minutes or less. Anyway, that's, that's what I do. I found a lot of success in it. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Hit the uh, like button. Hit subscribe to uh, stay up to date with my videos. Until next time.